Welcome to More Than Renovating, a renovate and real estate podcast. Our founder, Belinda Smith, talks to industry experts to provide you with the knowledge and information you need to make renovating for love and profit your reality. Belinda will also chat to some of her Renovation Mastery members who are just everyday people doing extraordinary things, following their passions in the renovation and property space. So let's jump straight into the episode. Enjoy. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Belinda Smith, as you know, from Renovate and Real Estate and welcome to the podcast, More Than Renovating. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Anita Burgess, and she's from Maison Place. And I really hope I said that properly. I know it's supposed to have a very French um, (laughs) accent, a very French feel about it. Uh, um, And you are the queen of organising and decluttering and keeping a tidy home, your specialist or I believe your one of your specialists or your specialties is uh, pantries and fridges and and all that kind of stuff. You've been on TV before the Today Show with Channel Nine. You've interviewed Jessica Rowe and you've helped her with her spice racks. Love it, yes. Angie Marshall's and Zoe's pantry only a few weeks ago. So um, you know you really have covered a lot of ground in and around Australia when it comes to decluttering and organising. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And if you really, I have been in so many pantries in the last few weeks, I feel like I've slept in a pantry. (laughs) I've lived and breathed pantries over the last few weeks. All right, we'll start with telling people where they can find you on Instagram. Yes, so on Instagram, I'm Mies on Plus Australia. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys can put up a link. I will. Um, and I, on my Instagram page, I share heaps of behind the scenes storage tips hacks look for me instagram is like a really cool raw way of um you know of communicating with followers and stuff like that and just people who love it and the way they comment and they share share it or they relate to it is such a special tool i think we have in social media yes. these days and you can also find me on the, my website mizonplus.com.au and i have a tiktok channel where i get even more fun but <laughs> i've seen you dance <laughs> fridays only fridays <laughs> used to be many more in my 20s but yeah. <laughs> only fridays if fridays are for your 40s yeah <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So let's talk about what what does your business actually cover? Let's talk about that first of all, so people know how they can actually relate to you or or how you can serve them or okay so I take look, I take myself a little further than just being a professional organizer. So yeah. when I started, it was kind of about the decluttering and the organizing. What it also comes down to for me is because I actually had a um a career in real estate before is I know how to prepare a home for sale. I also grew up in a hardware store, so I know how to use tools. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm very, so basically for me, it goes a little more than just the decluttering and the organizing. I go in and if it's not a pantry, I can actually fully put in a system for a garage, whether it's somebody like Benji Marshall or somebody, you know, for, whether it's the man who loves his tools or a man who loves his bikes or a woman that loves her gardening, it doesn't matter what, I will go that extra mile and I can put in this proper system that stays for a lifetime. So you really do look at your clients, say, or the people you're dealing with yes. and and bespoke, organised, build, design, storage for them. Yes, and that's what I actually say to a lot of people when I talk about what I do is this is not a cookie cutter system, okay? And if you think it's a cookie cutter system, you're not doing the right job being an organiser. Yeah. Every home, every place, every person and every space is unique and different. So someone's under stair storage that has no kids is going to be different to somebody's under stair storage who has kids. I agree. Yeah. And so, and people have all their different lifestyle, their hobbies, their crafts, the things they're into, and they, they've got stuff. Some people have a lot of stuff and some people don't have a lot of stuff. So how do you assess where people are at when you first meet them? I listen. Yeah. I spend a lot of time listening. So when I go into someone's home or whether it's, and it's always easier when I'm in the home and being able to speak with them or, you know, virtually a little bit, but on the phone, it can be even harder. But I really listen to, you know, how long have they been in the home? For example, you know, it can take 20 years to gather clutter. 
but then they want it done in two days. You have to kind of assess these type of things, you know, like I always say, it took you 20 years to get like this or five years to get everything in the home and, you know, to create a, you know, gorgeous, organized, calm space in two days is quite an achievement if it was a garage or something. So the family dynamics, who lives in that family, like who lives in that home, everyone has a place in that home. So I really try to work it within the rhythm of that home as well. Ages, pets, there's so many different implications. Um, you know, I, I, for example, you know, I have four children, but we are on a single story home. That plays a difference than if you were in a two story home with kids. Yeah, so it's definitely not a one size fits all. No. And then look, at there are some rules or whatever, like things that I take along with me, you know, that I kind of can implement in all homes, but I definitely give it a twist whether it comes to you know like say for example if it's back of door organizing I can put something on the back of door in anyone's home but it really depends what what height do I put it in is it a nine-year-old little girl's room is it like so those are the little things so there are some core organizing things that I always take with me and some I have used it's been almost 10 years now I'm still I was actually at a um, client's home last week and she had the art caddy that I had made her daughter in 2016. Oh <laughs> Still using it. Fantastic. Yeah. So when do people call you when they're inspired or when they're desperate? I think more when they're inspired. Yeah. There can be some desperate calls, which sometimes it might be if, you know, unfortunately a, a parent has passed away or something like that and they're dealing with a deadline. Mm. If a home needs to be put up for sale or something yeah. like that. Um, or sometimes Christmas even is a deadline. Yeah, you know, people start to feel that urgency. But quite often, more so, it's about being inspired and wanting to be like, oh, I want to have a space like that. And so your business has really evolved, right, because of the client base that you're dealing with and the services yes. that you offer. Where did it start? Have you always been tidy? I was the person, interestingly enough, so I was the person, if you opened up my school desk, because back in my day, it was the desk you had to open up. Do you remember? Me those? too, yes. yes. My desk was not neat, okay? <laughs> I was the one that shoved everything in just yeah, so me. I could get out and play with my friends. Yeah. But I was the person at home that when I needed to feel good, let's talk mental health-wise, if I were having a crap day at school, I was the one who redid my bedroom moved the bed moved the desk all that kind of stuff so for me actually um you know growing up and having kids and all that that is something that is quite cathartic with me is the letting go of things I'm divorced so you know one of the first things I did when I got separated was get rid of the bed sheets (laughs) get all the photos tear them in half you know what I mean so it's 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 something that's been ingrained yeah. in me that is a feel good and quite it's quite common that some yeah. people will find that like I mean for me exercise does not make me feel good going yeah. to give donation makes me feel good. good getting rid of something that I know is no place in my home but that can do good some, somewhere else and be repurposed makes me feel good and then it really comes down to also my I say like when I grew up in a hardware store my parents owned a hardware store in Coogee or my like and I grew up there on the weekends I have this thing of spatial awareness I can tell if something's going to fit without having to measure it. Yeah. So I think those things combined kind of made me find my very, very happy space and also being able to do it in someone's home and talk to wonderful people all day. How do you best manage people who really love to hang on to their stuff? It's a really good question. So when there's things about hanging on to stuff and there's like you mentioned before, hanging on to specific items. Yeah. So I say, like, you know, people have hobbies and that I call it the shtick. Okay, some people <laughs> have their shtick. Okay? My husband has a lot of shtick in his garage. Yes, right, shtick, S, 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 H, T, I, C, K, shtick. I'm going to teach this to you. Got it. So, like, for example, Jessica Rose, shtick yeah. in shopping bags. Yeah. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, she had a thing with shopping bags. She just doesn't get rid of shopping bags. Or if it was 
What else is there? I've got people, I've got a client that her shtick we laugh at is dust bags. You know, that you buy, get your shoes in. Some people collect shoe boxes, whatever it may be. But when we have, um, when somebody has their shtick and they don't want to get rid of it, okay, and they don't, they're finding it hard to let go of, I'll give them a little tool, let's say a little exercise we do. So I also try to tune in and find out whether a client is more, let's say evolved or connected to a number of things or visually an amount of things. So say, for example, if someone's shtick is scarves, let's say. So I say, okay, so uh, would you be okay for us to keep what can fit in this box or would you be happy to keep eight scarves? So you kind of learn that with the client and that I can usually tell in the first hour of how I need to work with the client of if I'm working on a number base or I'm working on a visual. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And, 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 you know, I just think tidying up, tidying up is just tidying up. And then when you're dealing with other people and clients, yes. then there's all that emotional stuff. It's where they've come from. It's the, they're growing up and their own story intertwined with the fact that you just want a space to feel better and to look better. And it's a totally different situation. We can deal with ourselves quite often, but when you're dealing with clients, it's it's a it's a different thing. And I think that's what actually I love the most is the yeah. stories. I really do enjoy spending time with my clients. And I find that because when you're living with, if it's your partner or your husband or whatever, because you're living in the same space, it's like this living, breathing organism. So it's not always easy to, it's not always easy for your partner or whoever may live with you to understand. So when I come in, I almost sometimes act like a mediator sometimes it's in trying to you know if it is a garage space and you know the the wife might just say oh my god his stuff is everywhere I can't get in or the husband might say look at all her stuff oh it's kind of like I just try and mediate so we can find a healthy space for everyone to have what they want because I'm I'm not there to tell you to get rid of everything okay for me it's about if I've been called in there's a reason for it okay there's some sort some something's bothering you yes now I often will find which I find is the most interesting thing when it comes down to what I do, is what is our most valuable asset? I know you might say your home, but what is our most valuable asset? I'm asking you the question now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually think health and time. I, that's time. Me. That's yeah, time. So yeah. time is our most valuable asset. Yeah. We spend in our lifetime yeah. approximately a year and a half looking for stuff. Oh, I don't doubt it. So it's between 10 minutes and 30 minutes a day on yeah. average, whether it's the library book, whether it's the iPhone, whether it's a sock, whether it's a key, whatever it may be. So if we can eliminate the clutter, have a place for everything, yeah. we're actually giving ourselves more time in our life, which I think is an extraordinary way to think about it. Yeah, oh, I totally agree. Um, I always say to, and or have always said to the kids, everything has a home. Find it a home. The minute you come home with something, come back to your place with something you've bought, find it a home and that's where it stays. And then you never have to wander around in circles trying to think, where is it? Where is it? I know. Exactly. It's just my eight-year-old daughter comes home with every stick and stone. She's oh, on the street and shell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if somebody was moving, yep. do you have any tips for people packing to move? Absolutely. First of all, when you're packing to move, it's all about preparation. Yeah. Okay. First thing you need to do is do some research. For example, you might want to do it around, like because we, we biggest the most important time to declutter is basically we say before a move. Yeah. Before kids' birthdays, before Christmas. There's certain times of the year which works really, really well. But before a move is uh you will it 100 percent you have to yes. declutter. Yeah. So important, find out if there's a council cleanup. Yeah. Around that time, you can work your declutter and your pack around that. Um make some research with um, charities if they'll pick up for you and also when you're decluttering for a move you have to remember you're moving into a new space quite often I'll go to somebody's new home because if they're like if they're downsizing if the kitchen is getting smaller something we have to be realistic as well so there's stuff we may want but there's also real being realistic of what can we fit also quite often when you're moving into a home some things might feel really good like a vase or a fruit bowl might have really felt good styling wise in one home yeah. but in the other home you almost sometimes have taken it out and it's like what did I bring this for yeah you know, I agree. To suit the space 
So when you're moving, it's really important to be prepared. So first of all, you want to make sure your services, like a council cleanup, all that kind of stuff, you work with that and, your, and you do your research or where donations can go. Next is being prepared with tools like garbage bags, packing boxes, whatever it may be. Usually if I'm doing a, I don't pack per se, but I will work with different packers around Sydney, but I will declutter and pack on the same day. So if I'm doing a bathroom, whatever, I might work with the client, we'll do a declutter. I just leave everything out then that what we're going to keep, but we've done the, the keep, the throw, the donate, the sell, we've done all of that and just the keep gets packed and then we tap, move it onto the new home but it really is about preparation I always say you should be prepping to move about six weeks to oh me it. too it's something you definitely can't leave to the last minute oh my gosh the phone calls I've got oh <laughs> I'm moving next week <laughs> if I had a dollar for every one of those calls yeah yeah it's really yeah. important about the preparation and just and if you are doing it all yourself, if you are doing the whole pack and move yourself, break it down into bite-sized pieces, I'll usually say from smallest. So go do a bedside table first because this isn't something you're born to do. We're not taught how to do this at school. You and I, I do this every day. I like it. That doesn't mean every Joe Blow is going, like it's very overwhelming. Yes. It's, you know, exactly. they next to death and divorce. Moving is one of the most like stressful things. Yeah. Yeah. So break it down into bite-sized pieces. Just do a bathroom cabinet. Just do an undie drawer. And then slowly you'll gain more confidence. I always laugh. And the kids always laugh, actually. They all, I had a five-bedroom house and there were five of us there at the time. And one was sick and the rest were away. And I moved the, everybody's stuff all on my own. Mum came down to help me, mind you. And my girlfriend flew down from um, Byron Bay to help me as well. Um, it was a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. it was just a lot of stuff. And I didn't like to make decisions on their behalf on what was staying and what was going. And I could say even five weeks out before they all went on holidays in all their different directions for work and other things, I'd say get rid of all your extra stuff, just get rid of it now. But they didn't sort of see the urgency. And then I was just left with it. I basically all I did was just pack it all, send it all away into storage. It took us a while to find another house anyway. Yeah. And then when we unpacked things, I was ruthless. And I stood there with them and said, you, you do know, you have to stand there with them. And even yeah. with my daughter who's eight, and we've moved twice. Yeah. Okay. And I've remarried and I've got another two kids. So I have found having my kids with me and like again I broke it down a little bit because my kids were young so whether we did dress ups or whether we did books or whether we did um but look I I know I know I need to be prepared for this but yes. I do understand it would have been really hard sometimes to get people to sit down and do that with you but it's interesting because I also say so <coughs> in the news in the new home people are even more ruthless mm. Because you know why? Because then they have to find a place to put it. <laughs> exactly right. And if your home looks different than the last home and it doesn't match, it doesn't suit the decor, there's not the position for it, Correct. then it becomes really easy to chuck it then. But then you've kind of double handled things. And that's what I try and say. So I do say, again, not only are we saving time, but we also yeah. saving money. So yeah. if you do it right on the first, like I say, if you're going to, if you're going to get packers, let's just say you've got packers involved and they cost X amount an hour or, yeah. okay, or movers, which everyone needs to pay a mover, okay? Yeah. The percentage of people aren't doing that move themselves. If they have to haul on 80 boxes compared to 60 boxes, that's money for you. Agreed. So if you Agreed. were schlepping rubbish, you're actually being charged for that. Yeah, twice. If you're moving yes. it out, they're moving it back in. Correct. So yeah. I try, that's how I motivate yeah. clients when yeah. we're doing it, when they're umming and ahhing, you know? Yeah. Okay, so are men tidier than women, vice versa? What, do you, what are your thoughts? I don't know if it's men is tidy, but I know clutter affects women much more than men. In a Being negative way? Organized, yes. Yeah. Being disorganised and clutter, there's actually studies have been done that with our cortisone and hormonal levels, women are much more affected by clutter. So actually, that's why I say sometimes give your husband a break because he does not see it the way we do. <laughs> Good point. It's true. It's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. Um, especially if women are nesting, it's a whole other hormonal level. Yeah, agree. Okay, and they go, oh, I've asked him a million times to go through these cables, go through these cables. He is not seeing the same thing you are. So you've got to, like I say, pick your battles. 
pick yeah, that is true. when it comes down to that. But that is um, scientifically proven that clutter um, affects women more than men. Yeah, um, obviously it kind of, well, I, I feel like sometimes the amount of clutter around me is a reflection of how I'm feeling at the time. So sometimes my desk gets really messy and 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 I'll just go, I need to tidy this up because I feel like I can't think straight if well, my desk is in disarray. Yeah, and I like it's, it, can, it can be something as simple as, for me, with messages coming through on the phone. Yeah. I know if I stay on top of those, but I know if I'm having one of those days and I've left that emails or whatever to get out of hand, it feels like clutter to me. But I do it. There's a there's a very strong link between mental health and clutter and keeping things in order and being happy with that, you know, and feeling in control. I agree. Okay, so to that point, do hoarders have a clutter problem? Or is it more some kind of psychological issue? So hoarding is a mental health. Okay? Yeah. So even the word for using hoarding is yeah. a mental health issue. I don't work with hoarders. I have been in a ho- I have been in hoarders' homes before. I don't work with hoarders because I don't like it, yeah. and I am not well. I am not the best person for that job. There are particular organisers who work with hoarders who are really, really good at it. And like it whereas do you say, I, I don't have that same level of um I'm not I don't I just don't feel I'm good enough for that I feel oh. like there are other people much better well equipped to go in there and when we're talking about hoarding we're talking about being it, it being unsafe yeah I agree I'm not talking about a woman that has too many shoes to, yeah I say I hoard shoes yeah that's not hoarding that's collecting yeah I agree it's a term that's probably used far too loosely considering it's such a serious problem 100 percent. and over the last so many years i've seen it because being organized has become so mainstream i often get people say oh anita i hoard blah blah and i'm like you don't hoard anything okay you shop too much (laughs) you collect too much you have like you know so there's a difference i say between collecting and hoarding hoarding definitely needs i even say bring in psychologists and stuff like that and there is there are avenues through government, through your council, through NDIS, that you that people like that can get proper support. So um, if somebody wanted to be like you, to yep. wanted to do what you do, yep. you actually have workshops helping people yes, to yes, become Yes, organizers. so it's become a professional organiser. Actually, today I was just confirming the next one, which will be April next year. Ooh. Very exciting. Um, well, I've got such a great... Um, Great. We had such a great conference in July, and I am now trained. After that conference, I took on about four girls yes. to train, and it was the first time I've done it. So now I also have consultants in Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour, Brisbane, Byron Bay, um, covering Melbourne, Sydney, Greater Sydney, you know, covering those areas. But I really see the demand. I must get 10 or 20 inquiry a day for people, for if, if somebody can come and help them in their home. So I'm trying to make suit that demand, but I also want to make it very realistic of what I do. Yeah. And like I said, it's not just, ew, it's not inst- It's not just what you see on Instagram. There's yeah, so I agree. Much more. So much more. I- so much more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I get asked by people to renovate their homes for them too. Same thing. There's much, much more to that. Much more than a little speedy reel for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where do you think your business is heading next year? What would you like to see? Well, so my, I really want by, let's say, if we sit here this time next year, I want to have another 20 consultants out across Australia. But I'm, not only do I do this workshop, it's not just a day workshop. Yeah. If you interview with me and then I take you on as a consultant, it's 12 weeks. Yeah. We actually meet every Sunday. And I go through in detail, I mean, I'm sure some of my consultants will see this podcast and they're just going to be like, I went through everything from the pinnacle shelving for a garage, how to measure up properly under a kitchen sink. Yes. It really is about, I'm trying to instill 10 years of experience in 12 weeks, which still isn't easy. But this time next year, oh, you know what? Chuck in a TV show. Let's hopefully have a TV show. By the <laughs> Why not? All right. I'll do the reno. You can go and do the tidying up or the prep. Yes, fine. I'm there. Um, okay. So what excites you about working with clients? Is it, I don't know, is it just being able to do the physical stuff? Is it looking at the physical result and how that makes you feel? Or is it more than that? It's about seeing them 
how they feel afterwards. Yeah. So it's all often about it's such a, I mean, especially if it's a if it's like say, let's say, for example, the kids have moved out and they've still got all this stuff left from the kids and all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like every time they walk through an area in their home, it's one of those doors they close. And to see that relief after we've spent of and we're talking about it took a lot of time for it to get like that for example and let's think then of how many times they've walked past that room or area and thought oh I should do that oh I should do that oh yes. that's annoying me but then we actually do it in a day or two it's like this light yes people feel lighter they yes. start getting creative with that space differently oh I might do this with it I might do this with it. so I think it's just for me that's the best feeling it really is the best feeling is seeing them now find their light kind of thing. I love that. So and I agree. And it's like befores and afters, you know, it feel it, it's, it's the whole emotional state that it puts somebody in. Um, and also coming home to something that's very organized. It just, it's just lovely to come home and drop your keys on the table and look around. And it just feels so good when it's. Oh, all- look, I'll speak from experience. My office. Okay. Was a disaster until a couple of days ago because I'm managing also my ex-husband's been away so I've been managing all the kids for the last 30 days yes. and work and you've seen I've done these crazy pantries and I had so much stock in my car that yeah. while I was but I also have to fit kids in when yes. I pick them up from school so I would <laughs> literally come in dump everything on the floor <laughs> run back in the car put the kids in the dog take them to swimming whatever it may be and that this office was just, I was just looking at Lazy Susans and I was like, I could, I literally have, was sitting just in this chair for the last month and I did it the other day. And now it's just, even my husband, oh, it's just so nice to walk in. And I it said, is. there's no way I'm going on a holiday leaving like that because that for me is a to-do list. Yeah, me too. To come yeah. home to that is, is tough. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just that absolute relief and knowing that. And it's interesting that you talk about the before and after you were saying, but for me, a before and after is so much more than a photo. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's like this feeling. Yeah, yeah. When I, and I, I know the, the whole, It's a sensory thing. You know, it's like the smell and the touch and the feel. It's not just what you see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Guys, you can connect with Anita if you'd like to become a declutterer yourself and an organiser. Yes, come on, give me a call. Let's see if you've got what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> not me. Not me. It's definitely not I me. I want to come and see your office. Oh, <laughs> I think office it sounds is, fun. My office is actually pretty good. Some, t- some other parts of the house, not so. You know what? We're all just trying our best and whatever we can do to give yeah. ourselves a little bit more time in our life. I think we're doing a very good job. Oh, no, look, you know, I'm about to embark on a big renovation. So I am sitting in an unrenovated house and everybody opens up the door and they expect it to be perfect and it's not. And when they open up your door, I bet you they expect it to be perfect all of the time. And it's hard to live like that. Yeah. And you know what? And I tell them again, like I said, pick, I pick my battles. I'm not going to yeah. run after my kids. My, da- my daughter has arts and craft all over the bloody house. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? This is her shtick. I love that word. I use that word. Yeah, and I got rid of it. But thank you so much for having me. And I really um, and I can't. Let's do this again this time next year and and see see where we're both at. If where we're kicking our goals. Oh no, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so. Thank you so much. All the best. My pleasure. Thank you. Peace.